We are here. Thank goodness we have a plan. Thank goodness we are in a place to fix this. The Honourable Michael Woodhouse. Well, Mr Speaker, the member has cleared something up. Uh, they're not the tax demons, they're the excise demons. Because that's what they're calling it now, and apparently it matters to the government. Well, as Nikki Kay said, it certainly doesn't matter to the people of Auckland who have to pay 25 cents a litre more for their fuel and wait, it's coming to a region near everybody. Because that's what the government wants to change, but it's not tax, it's an excise. I want to start by stating the, the, the issues at Middlemore Hospital are very concerning. But any doubt that the uh, government was manufacturing a crisis to cover the panic that they have over the promises was removed emphatically by the Prime Minister in question time today when an answer to a question about why she didn't use the very healthy services uh, surpluses left by the previous government was because, apparently, of Middlemore Hospital and Dunedin Hospital. Well, here's the thing. We know about Dunedin Hospital because the previous government committed unambiguously to a $1.4 billion rebuild. And if it's a crisis, it's a crisis entirely of the government's making because they chose to put that money back into the government's balance sheet by, and Mr Peters will be very interested in this, borrowing from overseas banks instead of using the very good equity interests that were coming from people like NZVIF, uh, Iwi and others, ACC potentially could have invested in Dunedin Hospital as part of a PPP and their crisis is entirely of their own making because they decided that that was ideologically flawed. But the only quantum of the extra money that we've now heard, and I think it's highly exaggerated, but even if it wasn't, is $200 million for Middlemore Hospital. Now, they campaigned on adding $8 billion more into the health sector alone than a national government would have over the next four years. $8 billion. They've got it in their fiscal responsibility statement. They, have a, uh, they know how they're going to spend it. And apparently, new revelations so far totaling $200 million, are completely upsetting the apple cart. And I want to know actually what this extra $10 billion of capital spending is. So I asked the minister, who was a member of what they purport to be the most open and transparent uh, government in parliamentary history, whether he will release the details of the advice given to him and the Minister of Finance. And the answer was, we'll consider it. <laughs> we'll consider it. Apparently there's a crisis, they've got advice, but they don't want to release the information. So I ask, let's give us one example, one example of something that was unexpected and the answer was Nelson Hospital. Well, newsflash for the government, we knew about Nelson Hospital because we asked for the work to be done. There are serious seismic issues at Nelson Hospital and they need to be remedied. Hardly unexpected, hardly a crisis, that's what governments do. They replace things, they invest in things, they fix things. And we did. Waikato Hospital, Wellington Hospital, Burwood Hospital, Christchurch Hospital, all rebuilt in the term of the previous government as part of the multi-billion dollar investment in the asset stock that we made and the five billion dollars extra, more than that actually, that we put into Vote Health for operational spending. And what did we get out of it? Did we get the crisis that they've just manufactured? No, we got 50,000 more surgeries. We got no gurneys in the emergency departments. We got no cancer patients being flown to Australia. We got record levels of immunisation rates. We got 323,000 homes insulated under Warm Up New Zealand. We got results. And apparently, that's a, menu, that's a crisis. Well, I suggest that it's a manufactured crisis, Mr Speaker, and I'll stand very proudly on that record. And the government needs to understand that when one is managing a 17 nearly billion dollar vote in health, there will be issues like Middlemore Hospital. There will be things to deal with on the day-to-day -day basis. But that is not an excuse to repudiate the promises that they made to the nurses, to the midwives, to the allied health professionals, to the doctors, but most of all, to the patients, that they would do something better. Because I can see what comes after a manufactured crisis. It's those other two words we're going to hear a lot of over the next few months. Broken 
promises. I call the co-leader of the Green Party, Marama Davidson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. So I just sat and listened through Michael Woodhouse.